1978, the Nagorno-Karabakh Oblast erected a memorial as a sign of 150 years of Armenian settlement in Karabakh. Since the adoption of Gulistan Treaty in 1813, the Armenians from Nagorno-Karabakh had arrived from the Persian region Maraga and the inscription said Maraga 150. However, the memorial remained in such shape only for 10 years as in 1988 in Nagorno-Karabakh Oblast began realization of right of the nation for self-determination. Inscri inscription on the memorial Maraga 150 immediately disappeared, thus the memorial was silenced. The same year Armenia SSR started open claims to annex Nagorno-Karabakh Oblast. On 25 January 1988, Azerbaijanis were deported from Armenian SSR to Azerbaijan, mainly to the city of Sungait. Less than a month later, in 18 February 1988, the number of deported Azerbaijanis reached 4,000 and all of them were sheltered in Sungait. Levon Terpetrosyan, the first president of Armenia, was main spokesman to the Armenian nation. He propagandized nationalism to the Armenian nation to raise the level of casus belli. Later on, he admitted his nationalist propaganda by his government and regretted his decision. As a result of the rise of Armenian nationalism, several Azerbaijanis were killed all over Nagorno-Karabakh Oblast. The most notable case occurred on 24 February 1988 in the town of Askaran. While Azerbaijani civilians were holding a peaceful demonstration against annexation of Nagorno-Karabakh Oblast into Armenian SSSR, clashes between Azerbaijanis and Armenians erupted. The clashes escalated when Armenian police officers started shooting into Azerbaijani crowd, killing two Azerbaijani teenagers and bounding dozens of others. Three days later, on 27 February 1988, while speaking on Central TV, the USSR Deputy Prosecutor General mentioned that the fact of Azerbaijanis were attacked and killed in Askaran. Within hours, a pogrom against Armenian residents began in the city of Sungait, 25 kilometers away from north of Baku. It was the same Sungait which in the same year sheltered 4,000 deported Azerbaijanis from Armenian SSSR. The clashes between Azerbaijanis and Armenians in Sungait resulted in the deaths of 32 people, of whom 26 were Armenians and 6 were Azerbaijanis. Sungait was now in the spotlight of the world. The Soviet authorities arrested Eduard Robertovich Grigorian as one of the main participants of the clashes who was Armenian by ethnicity. Dozens of testimonies and video recorded evidence pointed out that Eduard Grigorian was in the fact of the leader of these clashes. Soviet authorities concluded that Edward Grigorian had attacked and killed both Azerbaijanis as well as Armenians. He later on confessed being the leader of the program and noted he was ordered to do so. Although the mass media portrayed Azerbaijanis as the attackers, it was former USSR KGB chief Vladimir Khrushchev who confessed that all the clashes and programs were prepared months in advance and implemented with the approval from intelligence of official Russia and Armenia. Vladimir Khrushchev noted the Azerbaijani SSSR authorities were given the order by Moscow to ignore the ethnic clashes between Azerbaijanis and Armenians. He also pointed out that the fact Armenian and Russian news agencies were reporting the clashes even before the Azerbaijani news agencies. One thing is for certain, the deported Azerbaijanis from Armenia and the clashes in Askaran triggered the violence in Sungait. Levon Terpetrosyan took advantage of the clashes between Azerbaijanis and Armenians in Sungait and even compared the clashes with Armenian genocide, conjuring up ever-present memories of Turks killing Armenians.
This in turn escalated into frequent clashes between Azerbaijanis and Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh and Baku and eventually massive ethnic deportations were taking place. Azerbaijanis from Armenia left to Azerbaijan and Armenians from Azerbaijan left to Armenia. While the transfer was taking place, dozens were killed from both sides. On 15 January 1990, Moscow imposed a state emergency in Baku. Five days later, on 20 January 1990, Soviet tanks, troops and even navy rolled out in Baku. The Soviet army reportedly used armor and random fire to remove barricades and crowds of people. In an official statement by Moscow, it was concluded that 133 Azerbaijanis were killed in Baku, mostly involving very young civilians. However, according to real sources, hundreds more were killed and more than a thousand wounded. By this time, the spotlight moved away from Azerbaijan and the tragedy in Baku went unnoticed in the Soviet Union. In Azerbaijan, this tragedy is known as the Black January and it's seen there as the rebirth of Azerbaijani Republic. By March 1990, elections had taken place in all three Caucasian Soviet Socialist Republics. The Communists retained power only in Armenia, as Armenia voted in favor of the preservation of USSR. Russian analysts noted that more support for Armenia was required for the safeguarding of the Soviet Union. The Soviet army was reinforced in Armenia and the region of Nagorno-Karabakh, which later on assimilated into the Armenian army. In August 1991, Armenia and Azerbaijan declared independence from the Soviet Union and fighting between the two countries turned to full-scale war, known as the Karabakh War. The Karabakh War took a heavy toll on both countries and was one of the bloodiest conflicts in Eastern European region. Over 30,000 people were killed and Azerbaijan alone had a, over a million refugees. One in every seven Azerbaijani was now refugee, the highest refugee ratio in the world. Due to the high level of controversy in the Karabakh war, it's hard to say in details what exactly happened. For these reasons, we will focus on the basic points of Karabakh war. It's accepted that it was Russia who was responsible for the decision of military assistance to Armenia. An infamous example of Russia's involvement in the war was that Russian's 366 motorized regiment who was directly involved in the Khojala massacre. On the night of 25th to 26th February, the Khojala massacre was followed by unprecedented brutalities against the Azeri civilian population. In one day, 613 unarmed people, mainly consisting of women, children and elderly, were horribly mutilated and massacred, and close to 1,300 people were captured, many of them while trying to flee through an alleged humanitarian corridor. An Azerbaijani journalist, Chinggis Mustafaev, filmed the scene Khojala massacre, but unfortunately he was killed four months later. A quote by an American newspaper reads Armenian armed force backed by subunits of CIS Army, Infantry Guards Regiment No. 366, destroyed the Azerbaijani town of Khojali. The residents of the town were being run down by motorized infantry vehicles and armed personnel carriers. Old age people, women and children were being fired point blank. The injured were scalped, their toenails were pulled out, Armenians were piercing dead bodies' eyes, they were cutting off their ears. These poor people were guilty of one thing, they were Azerbaijanis. The Khojali massacre sparked anger and turmoil in Azerbaijan. Five years later, in 1997, Azerbaijani President Haydar Aliyev issued a decree referring to the tragedy as the Khojali Genocide. In May 1992, Armenian forces overtook Shusha and the Lachin district of Azerbaijan, which was the most critical strategic location in Nagorno-Karabakh region. This allowed Armenia to establish a link between Nagorno-Karabakh and Armenia proper known as the Lachin Corridor. The fall of Shusha to Armenia, a fortress with a reputation for its strong defenses, is one of the most controversial events in the Karabakh War along with the fall of Agdam. Corrupt Azerbaijani, Russian and even Iranian political forces and even individuals have been accused of willingly surrendering Shusha, Lachin and Agdam to Armenia. 
By October 1993, Armenian forces succeeded in occupying almost all Nagorno-Karabakh region as well as a large area surrounding it. In 16 May 1994, Azerbaijan, Armenia and Russia signed a truce that would effectively call for a cessation of hostilities. The 1994 Moscow ceasefire holds to this day. About 20% of Azerbaijani lands remain under occupation. And soldiers from both sides die frequently on the Armenian-Azerbaijani front line. In addition, while there are Russian military bases in Armenia, it is obvious that Armenia is a satellite state of Russia. A quote by George Cannon reads, Russia can have only vassals or enemies on its borders.